morning. Good morning, Pikachu, Eevee, Pyron, Pyron Knight, Pyron Tie, Pi Tie.
air sign. How was your trip? Sum it up all in one tiny Twitch message. Or how is your trip? Are you still are you still in Japan or are you back stateside, I guess? Flawless. Alright. Fair enough. Not sure how that, um... That doesn't seem accurate, but I'll take... Your, your, it's your trip. You experienced it, not me. Flawless is in no flight delays. Fair enough. Didn't get sick. Well, that's good. That's good. How how long were you there? Like two, three weeks? Hello, sp sp hello, Splenin. Splenin. Lennon. Two weeks. Two weeks feels like a fair amount. Like if you're gonna go that far, it feels like two weeks is a is a fair. My brother and his wife went to um, Australia, and I think they I think they took like a couple of weeks to do that. My parents are about to do like a two month long vacation in about a year or so. It's traveling. Might as well. Hey, we're young, right? I'll travel now. While we can still do jumpy jacks or whatever, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Out of context, they're assigned. <laughs> Almost a month long. Yeah, I mean, look, it's a long time. Or it's not. I mean, I guess going to Europe isn't the craziest thing but I mean there's still there's just so much to see no matter where you go good morning Falco Falco flyer I think the first time in Popcast history I actually got the guest cam shut up correctly. <laughs> oh, yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! Dave, 
does it feel, Momocon champion? <laughs> Couldn't have said it any better. <laughs> Hello, friends, and welcome back to the podcast. Whatever you're listening to this, whether it be live or VOD, Twitch or YouTube, or Spotify. Why you are lying to the world, trying to tell us that this custom Hydra is going to have point sensor. Waiting for nine ads to play over your Twitch stream. Wondering what it would be like if everyone in the Splatoon community went to the same high school. Whatever it is that you're doing right now. Appreciate you taking the time out of your day to listen to this. Uh, unless I don't. Happy Memorial Day, blah, 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 blah. It's a good day to have off. It's a good day to eat hot dogs and hamburgers or, in our case, uh, pulled barbecue chicken sliders. Uh, I guess it is a day to remember uh, soldiers who have died in the uh, line of action, but that doesn't mean we have to sit around and be upset and sad all day long. You can celebrate the fact that that uh, people died for our freedom, so we have a right to celebrate our freedoms that way. Happy Memorial Day. We got a lot to talk about, so let's speed through this stuff. News of Tournaments of Baby Adventures to the casual listener of the podcast. Toasty, along with IPL, is hosting an unnamed tournament this Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Last Ditch Effort. It is one of the many last tournaments you could play in to help increase your chances of winning a div that isn't going to make you sad i guess i don't know so toasty's hosting a tournament this wednesday little squid league is this upcoming saturday i think it's the 40th edition of that tournament i that sounds about right uh also squids for uh palestinian kids number two is going to be taking place on Sunday. I think there's also a revival of a mode cup in there on a Saturday as well. So there are tons of events going on this week, and that doesn't include the regular weeklies and bi-weeklies and all the other other stuff going on. There, there's a gazillion different tournaments to play in. Play in something. Why else are you here? I mean, I'm not going to play any tournaments because I'm, I'm done doing that, but you, you should. Today we are going to be recapping Flutie. Going into uh, with seeding week coming up next week. It is uh, an important tournament to be taking a look at. We'll see whose stock has risen the most from Flutie and what the purpose of this tournament actually is. Sign up to close on Friday for Flutie if you're interested in doing that. So you still got plenty of time to sign up. Make sure you do that. So we'll be talking about Flutie today. But first... I should hit all of these buttons in the right order. And we are. And I got this right. Look at that. I actually got Sync It in the correct position. So, MobileCon went on this past weekend. Splatlana, if you want to call it that. For more, we're bringing in one of the head TOs for the event. A Tetra player and a backward hat enthusiast. Seekant, how's morale Hello. today? Uh, morale's doing good. Uh, I just got back about, um, four hours ago, uh, back home from Atlanta, so, um, feeling good. Was the flight good? No, de no delays or anything like that? Um, actually, there's a pretty severe thunderstorm <laughs> over Atlanta right now, but, uh, my delay was only an hour. Um, I think some of the commentators weren't as lucky, though. Um, so... Hopefully that's not too big of an issue because I would like everyone to sleep in their own beds tonight. When you left Low Tide City, did you get caught in that storm at that airport? Uh, no, but I left really early for Low Tide City okay. because I had a work convention in Vegas. So I had to fly right from Austin to Vegas. Okay, so we flew out, I guess, Monday morning. And as soon as we left, like a giant storm hit the airport and like shut everything down. So maybe you're just... Uh, well, no, because you didn't get lucky with uh, with this Momocon one. The storms are chasing you or something like that. Um, Possibly. So, so just for the people that weren't there, have you been to Riptide? 
I can't remember. Uh, yes. Okay. I've been to 20. Do we do it in 21? And then I did. The only time I didn't do it was when Splatoon 3 came out. That's the only one I didn't get. That'd to. be 22. So yes. you've been to the quote unquote all the water park lands at least once. Mm-hmm. Uh, if or well, actually multiple times for each one. Um, so describe Momocon to people who typically go to the water park lands. Like, what's the difference between Momocon and these kind of events? Well, for a lot of Momocon, there's no water park. That's so deep that's, thought, yes. That's sad. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, Momocon is a, an extremely huge can't even call it an anime convention because it accompanies so many things you have it's i think they just call it like a geek convention now so you have like anime you have comics you have video games it's just everything you could possibly be interested in and it is this year it took place over four days it usually takes over three and just huge like fifty thousand people are there huge how did it is massive how did splatoon end up there uh so we were reached out by united gaming league because they had interest in um holding a splatoon land there so they reached out to us um and then well they reached out to Ray's, and then Ray's reached out to me to help uh help run the event and so we did what do you think the interest in Splatoon? Like, so they did Smash, right? Yes. Uh, what, did they, they do did Smash and Mario Kart? Smash and Mario Kart. What do you think mm-hmm. the the interest is with with like Splatoon? Like, why they thought that specific? Could it be like something just Nintendo related, just so they can have like Nintendo straight stuff, or without like bringing in like a different platform um... or something, or? I don't think that's exactly it. Um, so the, there was stuff other than Nintendo there. They had oh, like okay. Guilty Gear Strive. They had uh, Street Fighter Six, Tekken Eight. But uh, the the big events I think that were headlining were Smash and Mario Kart. And uh, you know, just having Splatoon there, I think, kind of rounds it out because it is. Well, obviously, I'm biased, but it is like one of the most esporty titles i think nintendo offers yeah i i think that's fair now what it depends on your definition of esport yeah and, you know nintendo's definition of these things but uh but but yeah that is um that's a fair statement to make how did how did you get into land toing um i kind of got i want to say i got roped into it but just um Ray's asked me if I would be interested in helping out, and um, I've always felt that I've wanted to do more in the community than just be a player. Um, I've tried a few things. I ran an online tournament once, uh, and then I tried commentary once. Didn't really enjoy it too much, though I might give it a try again. Um, but I just felt like TOing was a way I could give back to a community that has been there with me for almost a, a decade now. What is the stress level of running Momocon, like on a scale of one to 10? Um, Momocon, so j- if we just like silo, like running Splatoon at this event, yeah. Um, I would say it was actually a really good first land for me to TO because um, after the wave of LTC crash into a lot of people, um, uh, we didn't have that big of a land. We had like 10 teams, so 40 players, so fairly manageable. So that allowed me to you know, figure stuff out as we went on. And um, so I'd say out of a 1 to 10, maybe it was just maybe like a 5 moderate stress. <laughs> a moderate stress level, fair moderate enough. Moderate stressor, yes. You know, as I've seen, um, like in at the first Low Tide City and – well, no, really just, like, the first Tide City and, like, that second Riptide. It seemed like whenever I saw ATO, um, and this was, like, when K-Bot's, like, passing the torch, so everyone's kind of inexperienced. It looked like nobody was ever happy at, at any point. Um, but since then, you know, like, Big House, I remember seeing Rays at Big House and being like, oh, well, this is the first time I think I've seen ATO smile. And, like, ever since then, it just seems like it's just kind of, it increased upon that 
if you so what what do you enjoy more because you go to a lot of these events you played in the things you got uh uh when you were with acropora i think you guys had like the best jersey i think i've seen at a land um and, and you've run these things what what would you rather do like what do you if you were to go to any event what would you rather be somebody who's just there to play slash spectate or to run it i don't know i really enjoy both aspects of it. i mean i love playing this game i love just being a mosquito in the back line and just being an annoying to catch and all that but i also really just like um giving back and of running tournaments that are you know tournaments are pretty crucial to playing the game on a competitive level so I, I appreciate doing that and I don't I don't think I'll ever silo myself into one role I mean I enjoy being a player and I did enjoy being a TO so I don't think I'll stop doing either of them anytime soon was there Rizza posted some sort of photo of like this is the equivalent of the fire pit and it was like a gazillion people out there what yeah. what was that so it's just it's like this i don't even know what you call it it's just like this little outside area it's right between the convention center and the main hotel and they just they gate it and it's only only momocon uh attendees have like access from it from like 8 p.m to 2 a.m in the morning and so it's just like a huge gathering of like anime fans gaming fans just any type of and a ton of cosplayers like i was <laughs> astounded at the amount of cosplayers at this event I, I would say there were more people in cosplay than not in cosplay actually what was the best cosplay you saw i don't no, exactly. I saw a really cool uh, Master Chief from Halo. It looked custom built <laughs> and everything, maybe three D printed. I I don't I don't watch too much anime, so I can't really speak on that front. Well, I know like um I think Spy Family is popular now, but other than that, I don't really <laughs> have my fingers on the pulse. Spy so Family is pretty good. I my wife and I enjoy watching that. Yeah. Um, so how many was it often that somebody would come over to the splatoon side that obviously had like no idea what the hell that was but was just like curious enough to just like poke in or just like hey what's this kind of thing a little bit so just because of how few teams we had we were able to stream like every match except uh i think pool, except starting pools we were able to stream every match so every match that happened was on stream. So I think that visibility of just the projectors going across the entire room to the arcade helped. Um, and then we, you know, we had some people sitting like in the near or uh, the back, just kind of watching in and intrigued. So, and you know, the commentators do such a good job of hyping the game up, and their audio was throughout the room too. So I'm sure that helped. Yeah, that's it, as a commentator, it is always cool when like you know everybody's listening to you other than just idiots on Twitter. Um, <laughs> so that's that's cool that it that was kind of broadcasted like that. Um, so what is what is the future of Momocon uh, as far as like Splatoon is obviously Momocon's not going anywhere, but like as far as yeah. Splatoon's concerned, have you got any like feedback from the higher ups or like hey we were we're, we're really glad we did this. We want you guys back next year. Yeah. Nothing's set in stone, but every interaction that I've had, I had with UGL and um, Dark Knight, who is like, uh, who we interacted with through UGL has been extremely positive. Um, I think they enjoyed us having us there. And I would, I would be very surprised if we were not there next year. How so obviously like when this was announced low tide city was already a thing and there's a lot of rumors suggesting that there's going to be something back at that uh, that same kind of spot not low tide city but just kind of like a similar thing um so what um i i, I guess 
like is is that like a concern or anything like uh, that, that there's like competing lands around the same time or I mean there's nothing you can really do about it it's not like you can just change dates or something like that yeah so especially Momocom not set in stone yeah um that would have to be something that um Siren and I would have to discuss because Siren handles um what was LTC and whatever event would come after as a spiritual successor um but I think with um, them coming to commentate, they were able to see, hey, maybe since LTC is gone, maybe Momocon can kind of be the replacement for LTC in this time frame of the year. But that's, that's something I would have to discuss in more detail with her. How often, and I don't know if you know the answer to this or not, but I'm just kind of curious. How often does the, like, Splatland TO group get, like, approached or an offer from somebody that's like, hey, we want to do Splatoon at this event kind of thing? Like, does that happen often, or is that just, like, kind of a something I just kind of hope happens? Not to my knowledge. Um... I think I think a Riptide might have started out that way too, but I'm not confident in that. Um cuz I know a lot of um a lot of Smash tournaments started uh, looking at us very favorably after um free melee and all that. Yeah. But um uh but to my knowledge it's not too common, but I only really started get- was in with the TO group once I started working on Momocon. So anything prior to that, I don't really have that much information on. So what's next for you? Like, what's your next platoon related thing that you that you're a part of? Uh, well, well, I'll be I will be at Riptide. Um, like very likely be playing. Um, hopefully with um, Tiger or Serska and some of my friends. We'll have a good time. Um, definitely gonna volunteer there too, and um. Might looking might look into uh, possibly getting into the TO side of some online tournaments and helping out with some organizational stuff like that. Don't don't do which that. Would be really cool. Don't do that. <laughs> that's, the, that's the that's the first mistake. You you got the dream job. You are the the land TO. I keep that. Never <laughs> never get into online. It's all downhill. Uh, how many songs could you play on that guitar behind you? Um, probably like two. Two. I need to, I need to learn more. Um, I thought buying it and putting it within my sightline would make me pick it up and practice <laughs> it more, but I don't think it's had that effect so far. It's a nice little corner piece in the room, though. It's this yeah, nice little yeah, decorative I like it. thing. It's under my, uh, it's under my uh, Wonder Years poster, and then my next day poster is right over there. So, um, yeah, I really, I really like what I've done with this place so far. Well, I, I'm glad you were able to hop on last second. I know you're, I know you're really busy this weekend, and the uh, the lead up to these things, I hear behind the scenes are like crazy busy as well um congratulations and uh congrats on getting back home safe uh yeah, where can people you. find you what's i mean i know you're going to riptide but uh any plans for Ludi or anything like that no plans for Ludi, not right now um i'm sure one of my friends will need a sub at some point so i probably will be drawn back into Ludi uh at some point um uh, but yeah, I'm on Twitter as a uh, seek underscore splat, and I also stream on Twitch sometimes at Seekant Streams. So um, yeah, I might stream sometime later tonight or tomorrow. We'll see. Well, I'll see you at Riptide then. Again, thanks for coming on and uh, get some sleep. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So that was Seekant, one of the head tos for. Uh, momo con and i was you know i was watching that event slightly off and on over the course of the weekend there was just a lot of other stuff going on um sindal on saturday and then proving grounds on sunday but I- i'm glad it got more viewerships at the end of the event and w- my wife and i and pj watched grand finals um so it was cool to see that 
was rooting for Splat for all the way. And um, that was a big trophy that they gave out right there. So that was pretty cool that they were able to uh, to do that. I hope Momocon becomes bigger in the future. It, I mean, it, it's it's just going to be weird just because of the timing, but... You know, they have they basically built a Super Bowl arena right there. I don't know if you guys have seen the pictures. Powers, uh, Power has posted a lot of pictures, and I'm sure several other people have up on Twitter. But they they had like a giant stage, and it looked it looked pretty hype. Just needed some more uh, some more Splatoon folks out there. Hopefully next year will be a little bit bigger. There'll be more to say about Momocon in the future for sure. One of the things that was going on, and this is something I would like to see at some point in the future, as I'm watching Sindal Finals on Saturday, at the same time Momocon is going on, I'm just sitting here thinking, wouldn't it be cool if instead of these events going on online, like these major events that have a small handful of teams, instead of those being played online in one day, what if Sindal Finals was Momocon? Like, what if the top 12 teams or, like, top 8 teams or whatever were to be somehow flown in to this event and it wasn't, like, an open invite anybody could come up and sign up and play in Momocon? No, that would be what Low Tide City is. Instead, Momocon would be, like, our own version of Smash Summit, in a sense. Wouldn't that be pretty cool? And then it becomes a spectator thing. Like, I wouldn't go there to play Splatoon. I would go there just to watch these, uh, like, the top eight teams or whatever play. Basically, like, the Nintendo World Championships, except we say Taiwan, South Korea. Hey, we, we like seeing you guys here. We're going to replace you with Moonlight and FTWIN and Starburst. And just let those eight teams put them in a room, stream everything, let them just beat the snot out of each other, and then move on from there. That would be cool. But we're like light years away from that. And we're just going to have to settle for watching Sindal Finals on the IPL broadcast. If that is where you want to watch the Sindal Finals. The format was different this time around. It was no longer double elimination. Instead, it was group stage into top cut. Only four teams moving on the top cut, which was single elimination. I wonder how that went over. Because historically, Splatoon players, once you get out of low ink, if you do anything but double limb, there's nothing but bitching and moaning that's kind of met with those kind of formats. So I wonder how the group into top cut format worked out, especially considering a team like Rogue got eliminated in the first round of single elimination after going 6-0 and the entire way through group stage. But I saw something during that group stage that made me go, oh, this is pretty cool. Keo was also streaming at the same time as the IPL broadcast. And what Keo was doing was basically just bouncing around from each team, from each set that was going on. Oh, this set's a little bit interesting. Who's streaming their point of view? Let's just watch that. Okay, this set's coming to wash. Oh, look, this, this other set's getting really close. It's going to a game five. Let's find that point of view and hop over to that. Watching Keo stream. Now, Keo's just like doing just whatever. But it, it felt like that broadcast Keo was doing was still better than what we at IPL were doing, which is just we're going to pick one match per round. We're going to stream it. All the other five matches that are going on are just not on stream. If the one match we pick is a 3-0 sweep, then we're just going to have to wait for round three for something else to happen. And it's like, oh, well, this match might be interesting, but we already streamed that team earlier, and we want to try to get as many different teams as possible. Um, so we're just going to keep mixing it up. Oh, well, let's, these two teams are already eliminated, but we haven't streamed them yet. So let's let's get this match on right there. I wonder... If there's a way IPL can replicate and make like an NFL red zone stream during these group stage stuff, not stream one match in particular, but just bounce around from match to match when something interesting is going on. Because I'll be honest, even though I commentated the finals on IPL along with Gus, and I'm really glad we got Gus on for that because Gus needs to do more commentary. I like the analyst that Gus was bringing to some of these things. We're kind of lacking that a lot, especially now that Magic's uh, like now on blue sky only now, 
But I <laughs> I like the Keo broadcast more than the IPL one. Just because it was more it, it felt like you were watching the whole tournament versus just the one set at a time kind of thing that was going on. Um so that's something I was I, I wonder if like if we're gonna see the group format again. That's why I mentioned the format because I don't know how the players really like liked it. But from a viewer, I think there's a lot of interesting things you can do with that stream wise. And, you know, to be honest, I didn't even know it was group format until I turned on the IPL stream myself on Saturday. It was a bit of a, uh, oh, it's not double M. All right. Is this even the right bracket I'm looking at? Looking at? But still, season three came to a finale. And I have three takeaways from the matches that we were able to see on there. First off. Congrats to Healthy Diet Food Group for pulling off a monstrous upset against a pickup that included Zero, Wave, and Thunder. Whoa! Was not expecting that. So when there's 12 teams that play in these finals, and you have a couple of teams that are, I like to call them the human sacrifices. Yes, they are the top 12 as far as send-out Q points are concerned. Are they really the 12th best team in all of the known universe? Absolutely not. There was a rabbit that was in there in season one. Healthy Diet Food Groups fits this role this time. And you think, like, okay, they're a good, solid team. We've seen them play for a long time now. But they have no business being in matches against the likes of Rogue and... The, uh, the zero pickup that was going on there, much less beating them three to one. And by the way, what, how, how, how about the fact that this has to be the worst use of an alias I think I've ever seen in a tournament ever. The fact that I tuned into the Keo stream and I knew it was the zero pickup that was playing and I had absolutely no idea who it was that was kicking their butt. I had no clue because their name was like Walnut and Tr peanut pineapple smells like they all used aliases and i had no idea who that team was and then i look up later that they oh healthy diet beat them three to one oh then i made the connection because i saw some of their players just like tweeting out things on twitter and i was like i have no context of what this is but if we knew during the set what we were actually watching it would have been a little bit more monstrous but now it no now we know healthy diet food groups really impressed in this tournament where they had no business being impressive and quite honestly might have just played themselves into a div x role i'm not gonna leak anything because what signups aren't even closed yet but just looking at the teams that signed up and there's been some like a couple of rough drafts of what div x might look like from the uh members of the seating council div x is a little little funky <laughs> It's pretty much wide open at this point. So if you do something like Healthy Diet did or you win like the next SOS or Squid Junction or whatever, like that might be a Div X that comes along with that championship there. So that was one of my takeaways. Healthy Diet did Healthy Diet extremely impressive during their run. Number two, EU is still looking for representation outside of the Alliance Rogue, Rogue Conglomerate. Yes, Kaiser carried the flag for a little bit, but uh, I think some of their players have retired since almost sweeping jackpot in the world championships. And while Alliance Rogue, after beating Starburst over a year ago, has not reached anywhere near that peak since then. So Europe has fallen behind as far as like the tippity top of the, uh, the scene concerned. It's Starburst, FT Win and uh jackpot who are reigning supreme and we need stronger eu representation in some of these events so it was good to see rogue play not alliance rogue just Ro rogue they did really well went 6-0 and in their group stage including a 3-0 sweep over the starburst pickup team in the group stage only to be knocked out in this single elimination stage by fellow EU team Celeste, who finished in second place overall. Is this like the mark of like, oh, well, we got some teams that can compete. I would have loved to see that rogue team play jackpot in grand finals, but Celeste had other plans for them. And if Rogue wanted to make it there, they got to find a way to beat Celeste. They didn't. And because of that, 
Celeste takes second place. But this still feels like a step in the right direction for the EU region. And I know it's not fair to take one or two teams and say, you're representing this entire doggone continent. But it, the elephant in the room is the top three, maybe the top four teams all hail from basically the United States at this point in the western side of the world. You would love to see a little bit more stronger teams coming out of the EU region, and I feel like we're taking more steps closer to that as, uh, as the days go on. My third takeaway, and this should be pretty obvious, jackpot winning the event. Finally. Like, they, they had to win this one. They didn't win season one. They let Starburst take it from them. They didn't win season two. They let FT win, beat them in a bracket reset in grand finals. They had to win this one. They could not go three seasons in a row by giving the trophy to somebody else. This was the last feather in the cap that they were missing, and they finally got it. So now, like, if they don't play in season four, like, okay, no, like nobody's tripping about that. It would be nice to see all the actual legit teams play, but we saw less of the top players play this time around. And if they did, it was more of a pickup or a conglomerate of some, some sort. So for jackpot to play the best teams in this event and beat them all and get a dominant four zero sweep over the team that knocked off rogue in grand finals is good. It's good that Jackpot got this out of the way. The monkey is off their back, and they can just move forward with that. Lastly, before we move on, I do want to say this. It's been pretty obvious that Sendow has been carrying the scene for as far as like top-level competitive is concerned for the past five, six months. Eight months, possibly. Ever since the community guideline thing came out, it seems like Sendow is the only one who's producing these events to where the jackpots and the, and the teams like that are having something consistently to play in. So that's good. It, it's good that this is a staple of the competitive scene now. We, something we can look forward to. I'm not going to leak anything, but just hear this. Money moves are being made. There are some exciting, very exciting things on the horizon. And I'll just leave it at that. Just trust me. Some exciting things are coming forward. But regardless of what things are added to the scene, it's nice that this is a consistent thing we can look forward to every three months and uh, has been nothing but an absolute success since it's been introduced into the competitive Splatoon world. Flutie, flutie, flutie. Nobody cares. Weekly recap. Surprise, surprise, because it is the last week, or almost last week, for registration for Ludi. Tournaments have been fat as teams are scrambling to get tournament results. Paddling pool number 268 took place last Wednesday. It was won by Mango Hack Mech. Catnip took second place, and Moo Moo Meadows rounds out your top three. I haven't seen Mango play in a while. Uh, one of the stronger teams from Germany. Coming back into paddling and winning it over Catnip. 40 teams playing in this edition of the Paddling Pool Tournament. Later that night, SOS number 149 took place, and Harshi is gay. It was the champion of that one. Kafune took second place, and Grim Life, Grim Minus Life, rounds out your top three. 79 teams officially played in this tournament, making it the biggest SOS ever. Now, it could have been bigger in the past when it had the 64 cap there was times where they had the close registration on a tuesday after hitting 64 teams so one of the reasons why um sos moved to both start.gg and eventually to send out was that the formats those websites provided allowed the tournament to run on a much bigger scale if possible without really running too much over deep into the wednesday night so all the kiddies can go to school in the morning that being said um, this tournament could get even bigger. I think it can hold up to 128 teams. And if you get that many for a Wednesday night, I think something's wrong with all of us. Hammerhead was won by Free Flow. Mako Bracket was won by Cherry Bomb. And Lantern Bracket was won by Turning Tides. 
Proving Grounds number 32 took place on Sunday morning, afternoonish. Morning, I guess, if you're in the Pacific time zone. It was won by Flop Equal Bop. Monsoon took second place, and Little Boy Squad rounded out your top three. This is my first time seeing Monsoon play since they became a team that was announced. I was a, it was a team I was looking forward to seeing. It's going to be a team coming out the gate that's going to have a lot of expectations and eyeballs on it for a variety of different reasons. Finishing second place in this one is not too shabby. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about them later because they played in Flutie as well. 29 teams played in this tournament. It's one of our bigger proving grounds. And it's nice to have a tournament like that. Smogon, Smogon Starlight was played on Sunday and was won by Freak Island. Terra Water took second place and Cha Ha Ha round out your top three. 30 teams played in this tournament that is hosted by Narval Carnival. It is a uh, tournament focused on a tier-based weapon list. Momocon took place over the course of the last weekend. It was won by Splat for Bronze, Naver Nape, and Soren. Congratulations to them rooting hard for Splat for, and how could you not root for Monkey themselves? Quite the way to celebrate winning the tournament. But hey, you win it, you get to do what you get to do. Florida Man took second place. And that was your weekly recap. Sponsored by Siren, who is the only land TO to never make an appearance on the podcast. <laughs> I have now added Sinkent and I've had Hammer, Magic on multiple times, Riza from an airport once, Rays, Brush, Kbot. Am I missing anybody? I don't think I am. I think Siren's the last one. Can we get Siren on the podcast? I don't know. I don't know if Siren's interesting enough for that, but maybe someday, maybe someday we'll get all of them on here. Until then, she's just going to have to settle for being the official sponsor of today's segment of the Weekly Recap. I guess I haven't gotten any of the like local TOs. Like, I haven't done a... I haven't gotten anybody from Gridlock yet. Maybe we should get somebody from Gridlock on. I'll have to get Pepe on at some point too for not just Sunset Surge, but just like all the stuff that they're doing competitive Splatoon wise. Might be having the best like land trophy case of the year so far. Flutie, Flutie, Flutie. Before you ask, no, I did not help with seating for Flutie. I am on the Ludie seating council, and they get the same people from the seating council to do seating for Flutie. Uh, I'm going to use the excuse that I have a kid for not helping out with that. Like, <laughs> seating that many teams in that little amount of time seems like the absolute most unfun thing I think I could possibly come up with. So no, I didn't help with that. So if you didn't like the div that you got, the good news with Flutie is you get the flex and prove that you're better than what everyone thinks you are anyways. But Flutie as like a standalone tournament, like that should just be a thing, right? Like just a one day event, you get put into a group of everyone around the same skill level as you and you just play out in that group. Group stage in the top cut. If you don't like what group you're in, you get to just win your group. And then the next time a Flutie happens, you'll be like, all right, well, we're just going to bump you up. And if you do bad, you just get relegated down. Like that's that seems like as a concept of a tournament, something people would be interested in if that happened on a regular basis. It has all of the things you weirdos like about Lootie and all the bad things are not prevalent prevalent at all. You get a ranking based off of just signing up, which is the whole point of Ludi. You get to play in tournaments with teams of similar skill level as you, and you don't have to do any scheduling. No DMing the teenagers. Hey, when are you guys available? Oh, we're available on Christmas Day, uh, 2 a.m. Uh, we'll see you there. No, no. Like, are you, do you, 
are you not available at all ever? You only have four players on your roster. Why did you sign up for Looney? You aren't built for this. None of that crap takes place in Flutie because you just sign up and you play it like a normal tournament. And I get it. Look, I, I get if Flutie was taking place at a time when Looney wasn't happening, you wouldn't have that many teams signing up for Flutie. It would be a much smaller tournament, which would make it easier for TOs to manage another reason to do it. I would hope at some point Flutie becomes like the, the main thing that is done by the Ludi team it, or at least like something that was done in the off season. Um, and I feel like that was what the first Flutie was. It was like an off season tournament just to like build up interest. It wasn't for like seeding or anything like that. That's what has become a seeding tournament for Ludi. But I just wish Flutie was more of a regular thing because the concept of it is something. I think the vast majority of people from low ink up to, well, as we're seeing people that play in weeklies and not much higher than that, there's an interest there for it. And I'm not at all advocating for more tournaments. Lord knows we have way too many freaking tournaments going on right now as it is. There's no room for any other tournaments to take place ever, but there's still more people. I am coming up with uh, this tournament because we need tournaments for Tuesday at 2 a.m. There's a market for that. No, there's not. Oh, but Flutie's still good. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I wish this wasn't just a seeding tournament only. I wish there was some more value to this because I feel like there's a lot of value to it there. Speaking of value, what teams increased their value just by playing in this tournament and what teams are probably hoping they didn't sign up into this one, which is an interesting concept, right? Like I talked about last week, how osmosis didn't have to do anything. Like we all know what div they're going to get. Um, black Lotus. If you don't, if you're you like black Lotus, isn't going to be wondering, Oh, are we div one or we div X? Like we all know what div black Lotus is going to get. The only thing black Lotus could do is play in a tournament get absolutely bodied and then make everyone question, Oh, are they not that good? So like th there's that interesting take of, should you play in tournaments versus do you think your spot's secure and maybe you shouldn't so that you don't lose a spot. But if you are who you say you are, you should be able to play in any tournament and prove that you're just as good in any single one of them. But who did the best here? We're going to be taking a look at each div starting with div D as in D's nuts. We'll take a look at the final stage of this one. The most important thing about Group D, it being the bottom, um, the bottom div in the entire entire thing, this would be the group of teams that either the TOs knew absolutely nothing about, or like okay, the best thing you've accomplished is something in Little Squid League. So like you have to go here by default. When it gets to seeding these kinds of teams into Ludi. I will openly admit these are the teams that get screwed over the most. Now it's difficult because when you have those fat divs at the bottom, I think one of the divs was 96 teams last season. Okay. Well, how do you distinguish between which one of these 96 teams who should be like the first team out of this div and into the div above them? And who's like, how do you decide who is who when all the information that you have about them is just them playing each other and getting results off of each other in Little Squid League. Like a 3-1 and one team in Little Squid League and a 1-3 and three team in Little Squid League, they're getting the same exact div, even though they're like better than, like one's clearly better than each other. You just got so many teams, it's hard to distinguish. So that's the value of playing in Flutie as a Group D team, because these are the teams that are just going to get thrown at the bottom if they hadn't played in something like this. But you get your name out there. Now we know when Triple Star Strike and Dark Striders start to sign up, I'm going to be like, ah, I remember them from Flutie. And then I'm going to look a little bit deeper into them and we can get moving on and finding like an accurate div for them. So that's the, really the value just by playing in this group. Um, the things to get like Painted Knights is the only team I actually know that's part of this. The, every other like I know what Donkey Kong is. But, um, like, every other name is just, like, just doesn't stick out to you initially. So that's the value of this. Anybody who actually played and made final stage of Group D 
got something positive out of this tournament where a bunch of others um, are going to be... Well, somebody's going to make the bottom div. Group C. This is where things get a little bit more familiar here. I can look at this and I can just instantly recognize a lot of these team names that are signed up here. I don't think I can make this scroll in a little bit bigger, but it's hard to find. First off, the team that won this one, Vector Cry. This is going to be confusing because there was a team in Div, uh, Div D right below them, VQ Vector Cry. So is this just like a popular word all of a sudden, or is this like the splat a lot um, slash ASC kind of thing where there's just a bunch of different teams that all have the same name under the same brand, and it's that alone makes it confusing to distinguish one from the other. But when you win a tournament now, it makes the scene council think, aha, I know the difference here. I can understand things. So Vector Cry being the winner of this one's nice. But all these other teams I already recognize. Remix, not r, -R remix The Ink Drinkers, as I remember them because I called them out for having a, a, a poisonous name. Uh, Arrow 404, they played in low ink. Inked Under, Ocean Harmony. Like all these teams, Riptide. The Hoot Hoot Recruits, good to see them back. All these teams play in, or at least recognizable which is something that's very important when you want to get a good looty div. You need to be able to stand out from the pack. You don't want to just be like in the middle of everything, just kind of blending in. So these teams that I just kind of mentioned, they all stand out already just off of their name. And now they got some results of to like actually back it up with them. So there you go. An example of how you can help get a better div. Sometimes it's just standing out a little bit more than others. Uh, div D. So here's what's interesting about this div. So normally when you win a div, you get the sense of like, well, I'm better than this. You shouldn't put me in this div with all these other teams because all these teams suck. Well, the, the copycat won this div and they swept grand finals 3-0. Um, in fact, they went finished off 6-0 to close out the set. Go to Shell, took them to a game five. Um, but what's interesting about copycat is they're lucky to be in top cut. Anyways, they had the, they went three and two in their group stage and the tiebreaker. What was the tiebreaker? Uh, they got the one, what, I don't know what, how they had the tiebreaker. Maybe they won like the head to head over the tell tubby. Um, and of course it would be the vinyl one. Yeah. So copycat beat them. That's how they get the tiebreaker, but copycats lucky to even be in top cut. And if they, the tiebreaker doesn't work out in their favor, A, we're not even going to be thinking about copycat, and but B, we're not even going to be considering them for like, oh, well, they're better than like an honor-bound kind of team who is a team that does stand out, or the Fallen Squids or something like that. Um, or Origami Dragon. How'd they end up in this div? That's good. Good to see. But still, is copycat like head and shoulders? Can you literally say they're like, oh, they were way better than everybody else in this div? No, but now you have to actually start thinking about them because they made the most of their opportunity that was given to them. So nicely done. And also, this is uh, these are all low ink eligible teams, and we're just in Div B. I want you to recognize that. We got two more divs to go, and we're still not out of the low ink territory just yet. It's a sign of what's to come with these looty divs. Hint, hint. Group A. So let's take a look at this one. Loxie is the team that won this one in a game five. I, I, I don't think I'm breaking any news here. Loxie did not play in the last low ink. They hadn't been banned from it, but they never signed up for the last low ink either. So I'll, I'll just openly say this. I'm like 95% sure there's no way we would have let Loxie play in the last slowing. Like that was this like, okay, if these guys sign up, we'll, we'll be able to look deeper into them. But I remember watching them play the last low ink they played in, which was the only low ink they played in. And they curb stomped everybody until zest fest went super sane and just like, like anime protagonist beat them that way and ended their run right there. But I saw from what I saw from Loxie, even though they didn't win that low ink, it was like, okay, these guys are way too good for this tournament anyways. Like they just got, they just got low inked like a lot of teams have done over the past, but it doesn't mean they're, they should get another shot to win it. Cause they're that good. They proved it right here. They beat low ink champion WD 40 in a game five and went on to win this whole div. So this div is the interesting mix of teams that have playing in low ink 
and teams that have just like recently won it or are like banned from it. So this is like the 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 weird transitioning out of low ink phase. And we're still in Division A. There's only one other division left to go into this one. Uh, so shout out to Loxier, WD40. Um, like all these teams were in the right skill level with each other. Um, obviously, like Howdy Hat Pirates and Zestfest are trying to get up into that category that those teams are in. Um, I don't think anybody else like particularly stood out like some of these other teams i don't know i don't know who subway rats are convergence paradox and because it's on challenge you can't just look up there i can't just click on this and well here's convergence's roster no but i i mean we can find it it's just like initially looking at this doesn't really work out but that's the next to last group we only have one more group to look at and this is going to be the group where all the low ink teams are finally a hundred percent out of it so, let's take a look here. The most important thing about Group S, just making it to Group S is good. That means the seeding council saw you as, what, one of the top 36 teams? This is a smaller div than what the other ones were. That doesn't guarantee you anything, though. What this basically means, if you're a team like Distinct or an Overtime or Strawberry Soda um, or... Yeah, those those main teams, like all these other teams, like Smoking Moais, Smoking Moais were in here. Uh, well, they made the most of it. Surf and Turf, like Triggerfish, like all these other teams, like definitely. Oh, I didn't. Wow, I wouldn't. I didn't see. Uh, are they low link eligible or not? Because they're they're not going to be much longer. I remember them playing in it recently. My point being, this was an opportunity for teams to show that they belong in these upper areas. And I would have really loved to see VR cat. Oh, man, I, for, I forgot about them. They're a low link champion. All the teams that, ha that had the most approved didn't play in this one. VR cat didn't play strawberry soda dropped. Oh, they dropped around four. So strawberry soda actually played, but looks like they got beat up for most of the time. Overtime dropped as well. Like these are, those were the teams that had the most approved and they didn't, prove themselves in this one so which is fair enough the thing is they got an opportunity that several other teams in group a could have got an opportunity like some of those teams that i listed off are in the same exact category as loxia and um uh wd40 like some of those other stronger teams in group a they just hell happened to get the opportunity to prove they they should be separated from them and they prove that they don't need to be separated from them in this one Still, that's what Group S is all about, getting that opportunity. As far as Group S really concerning here, um, Catnip being one of the uh, one of the other teams that everybody's kind of looking at right here, um, getting 3-0'd by Helios. Helios is the team that had the most impressive run out of this one. Like, uh, wh whatever you would think about them going into this one, you now have to take them... Like, like they're a very serious contender here sweepy or not sweeping but they beat monsoon who's a team everyone's gonna have their eyes on no this is not the stargaze that has yeet on it this is the stargaze that is brand new um, that's gonna be weird for some of us old heads to get through but there it is uh but helios beating monsoon and catnip six to one is beyond impressive and beyond eye-opening and we'll I, I mean, I, I don't want to say like where where I would personally put them, but I think that kind of just like cements them into like it, it shows like what the worst div they could possibly be in. And they can't be any lower than that. Kafune, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, is the team that won this whole thing and they won all of Group S. One thing I want to point out here, just because you win a div, div s doesn't mean you're automatically given the opportunity to make div x that's not what this means yes they won div s here this same team got second place in sos which traditionally isn't a super strong tournament as far as like div x teams are kind of concerned so i don't know where kafune is going to end up here and they were the 12th seed do they, does that mean they like took another loss at some point um I would assume so. Yeah, I assume. Uh, how did their match against Monsoon go? Okay, so they took them to like a game three with something on the line right there. So not a not a bad loss at all. And 
you know, over overcame a lot of other stuff right here and beat the team that seemed like them really strong on their own right. So it, it's going to be weird. The, my point being, it's just like all of these divs, whatever it's going to look like at the end when they come out, Div X and Div 1, I think, are going to be a little bit weird from what we're used to seeing. <laughs> but opportunities are being presented and teams are taking the most of it. Not everybody took advantage of opportunities in Flutie. And, and some teams were given a shot to prove themselves and they didn't prove themselves. So be it. But as you, again, you just look who's here and who's not. Spots have to be filled somewhere. Somebody has to get a, a, get on the, the, the bus and ride it. We'll see how that works out. And that's going to do it. We covered a lot of ground here on the podcast. Signups for Ludi close this Friday. There's only going to be one week of seating. If I think right now there's 250-ish teams signed up, which is perfect. Like uh, it's it's not going to be difficult to seed this at all. Um, if it stays around that 250, 300 mark. If you want to get a good div, and I'll, and I'll, I'm openly saying this, Div X is wide open. Like if you win a tournament this week. You might that might be enough to like guarantee you a spot in Div X. It, it very well could be, or next week or something like that. So play in tournaments because th there is there's a lot of high divs that are just open for grabs at this point. From what I'm initially seeing right here, we'll be back next week to recap LSL, uh, a very important LSL as far as uh, seeding for the lower divs is concerned. Mode Cup's going on. Kids for Palestinian, uh, or Squids for Palestinian Kids, number two. A lot of different events going on. Toasty's Last Ditch Effort on Wednesday as well. So playing them. We'll be talking about them a lot next week. And if you'd like to be a part of the podcast in any way, feel free to reach out to my socials below. Twitter at Mr. Underscore Popgun. Discord at Popgun. YouTube at 25Popgun. Twitch at Popgun25. Anchor.fm backslash Pop gun. Let's go to Rose of Battle. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. Make sure you get vaccinated. Wear a mask when applicable. Um, test yourself if you went to Low Tide City. Or maybe not. Maybe we're symptom free at this point. I don't know. I'm not a doctor, guys. I'm not even a cedar in some sense.